Hello and welcome back to Antidepressing. This is the show where we talk about everything from liturgy to Lexapro. So excited to have you here. I am Jasmine Schober. This is the wonderful, the glamorous Chanel Shaw. Glamorous. Wow. Glamour. Yes. I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is a great show, you know. <laughs> Um, it's a this is a great for show. Me. Yes. This is a great environment. Very it's a healthy. Good vibe over here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, good vibes over here. If you would have told me that every week I get to sit down with Jasmine and just talk about pop culture, I would have said, I don't even believe you. So this is so that. great. Um, I'm excited for this episode because we're talking about a lot of great things, um, including um, Kim Kardashian. A lot of great things. Uh, heroism, <laughs> uh, the Black Little Mermaid. I mean, it's just like chock I mean, full. what aren't we chock talking about? Full. What are okay. we not talking about? Politics? Never. Chanel, before we get started, <laughs> uh, tell me about what you've been doing. How are you? What is up? So um, I have been living my rich girl life. Um, My mom and I just went. Yeah, I'm cosplaying a rich person. (laughs) My mom and I went to New York. Um, We went to visit some of my family there and just went on vacation, which was so nice. My mom has always wanted to go on vacation in New York. So we stayed at a nice hotel. We went to some perfumeries. We walked around Fifth Avenue. um, And it was just so nice. Our hotel was next to Central Park across the street from the Plaza Hotel. Um, which Eloise at the Plaza, if anyone has watched that, so good, classic. So it was so fun, um, and it was just really great to remember that we can do nice things for ourselves. So, um, yeah, we had a great time, and I have to show you some of the scents I got um, when we were there. It was, like, crazy. Um, And, uh, yeah, and so that was a majority, and then just, like, working and – you know, being yeah. a cog in the machine, you know what I'm saying? So Your favorite thing it. to be. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing to be, just a, a blip in <laughs> in the world. So, um, so yeah, so just like working and living. So how Amazing. about you, dude? How's life going? I'm doing good. Just living that mom life, potty training the little one. And I'll talk more about that later. It's been the journey of a lifetime. And getting ready, we're packing stuff up getting ready for the summer camps we run and so that's been crazy and fun and exciting and it always is this time of year is just like nuts for us um but i'm so excited because you're joining us for a couple weeks what a gift alive in you doesn't even know what's coming so if you're listening you're coming to alive in you we will see you there, there the is. dynamic duo i'm not the same in real life i'm actually very mean that's so true so. everybody who knows her in real life yeah i also that. don't look the same i have lizard skin what is happening <laughs> <laughs> you don't have flaws. I'm actually skin. a lizard person. Do you so. know people, for those of you who don't follow Chanel on Instagram or don't deep dive into her comments like I do, there's theories that you don't have pores. People uh, are wondering if you have pores. That's actually true. So as a part, so lizards, um, I don't believe that they have pores. They just like rest in some water or something, and that's how they cool. That's and how so she I looks think, like that. Yeah, that's how I kind of look. So this is all just like a cover. So for, to cover up my lizard skin, I have to have a really tight like coverage. That's um, amazing. Yeah, just so you don't so see like, like kind of like the a sheet massive. Coverage. Yeah, yeah, just so you don't see the massive bumps and you know and stuff. Well, so. honestly, it's worth. Working. Thank you, you so look much. Glamorous. Thank you so much. Speaking Lava. of not having pores, I actually got my first facial a couple weeks ago. You so did. that's where those comments I came from. I can't believe the glow up after that. Thank you so much. I literally was a I mean, facial. Just, yeah. What was it? I was a um, a facial denier. Yeah. Uh, for a while, and I went and I laid down, and she put like a steam machine oh my on my face, and then she was like, and beautiful black queen, like black business owner, loved it, walked in. So professional Amazing. great she put like a steam thing on my face and then she put all these like things on oh. and was like rubbing and exfoliating and like massaging my neck and talking to me I all about that. my routine mm-hmm. and she was like well what are you doing like how are you what's your routine are you drinking water oh she calls you out she's she like, like hydrated she's like are you eating like what are you eating you because eat vegetable <laughs> Um, she was like, everything that goes in will like show through your skin. Wow. So it was really great to go. And afterwards, I just was like, wow, my skin looks great. And so it just flawless. has continued to look great. Yeah. And even like, you know, now it's like I'm getting ready for Miss Suzanne. What did people call her? Like Miss Red Robin or whatever. Um, we're ladies. 
my period and before <laughs> like, ladies some of the people stop the stigma like, you're not yeah and so it's like usually my skin becomes horrific you know shout out to hormone imbalances but it's actually been really good that's so, amazing yeah and I, I think I'm giving all credit to this facial lady so wow yes you should review the heck out of <laughs> her should. business it should be that the google reviews are crazy I'm about like, to get crazy <laughs> She'd be like, Chanel was waiting for her Red Robin and her skin was like still fine. So I have oh the skin gosh. of an infant and I'm about to be 30 years old. So soon. And I look like this. I mean, like all because of one facial. All because of one facial. Like you I really too could look like this. This isn't genetics, baby. Like this I really think facial. like, yeah. That's crazy, though. Your mom has the most beautiful skin I know. and looks so I really young, do think so it's genetic. genetic. Yeah, yeah, it's genetic. Thank God. It's Amen. genetic. Don't yeah. make people feel like the facial <laughs> cure that. Amen. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Okay. Well, I'm so excited to jump in with you. Please kick us off. So but before... Yeah, so we decided that before our stories, we're going to play a little, uh, like, intro, just to, like, hype, hype everybody we up. We started it last week, and it felt right. Yeah, we're just going to, like, move around a little bit. So, honestly, I can't remember which one is the song No, you one. might hit the clap one. So, I might hit just, the clap one, so just bear with us. Just okay. push a button. Here we go. You ready for some stories? Oh! Oh! <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Wonderful. Okay. So our first story, we're talking about parenting. Woohoo. Such a noble vocation. So Kim Kardashian. <laughs> when you we're talking about nobility. Think- Kim Kardashian. No, just kidding. I mean, she's great, I guess. Um, Kim Kardashian says on parenting that she, quote, struggles to handle changing moods and personalities, end quote. Question for you. Yeah. She has like, what, four kids, I think? Four kids. Four children and little children. Yeah. Does parenting get easier if you're a celebrity? Hot take. And then, yeah, yeah so let's answer that question let's first. Start with that. Do celebrities have a right to complain <laughs> about rearing children because kim kardashian in this interview she said that she goes to bed some nights just like tears in her eyes one of her kids told her that she means nothing to them uh pretty intense stuff uh she says she doesn't have anyone to help her with these kids and they're changing moods and personalities you know what that's like you have like parents she's talking about yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. so like first hot take i mean and this this is really hot because we didn't even talk about this before but do Hit me with does it. parenting get like can celebrities say that they're having they a hard, hard time with parenting? I will say this. When I first read this article, I was like, okay, Kim, but mm. like how many nannies do you have? How many people are helping you out? And then I listened to the whole podcast um that she was on because I was like, let's benefit of the doubt. I want to hear like the entire thing. Mm. Um And I, like, can respect a lot of what Kim Kardashian does in regards to her career and, like, being a mother and all that. So I was like, okay, let's go for it. Listen to the whole thing. And from her perspective in this podcast, she was explaining that when she is not traveling for work, she does all of the drop-offs for her kids at school because she wants them to have, like, that kind of normalcy with her. Mm. And so she was saying, like, In the morning, she wakes up before them. She exercises. She, like, gets her mind right and, like, has time for herself before, like, the absolute tornado of getting four kids ready for school. And I felt that because my husband actually has been on this big kick of, like, he's been waking up at 5 a.m. and exercising before the kids get up. And then I continue to sleep. uh, And he deals with the kids until he's like, you got to get up because I need to go to work. (laughs) Um, But it's something that's been really inspiring me. And I'm like, Mm. I can really see the benefit of that, of, like, getting up. He does, like, his prayer time. He works out. He, like, gets his mind ready before the kids are up. So he's, like, ready to receive them. So a lot of that, I was like, okay, actually, maybe I am sitting in a position where I'm like, you know what? People who have a lot of money who can pay for nannies, like, can't complain about, like, taking care of their kids. But isn't that just what we do to all parents, that we make it seem like it's probably easier Mm. for them than it is for me, and that's why their kid is this, this, and this? Mm. And the parenting comparison can just get so toxic and we do it all the time of like anyone I follow on social media if they're like posting stuff with their kids or they're posting parenting stuff I'm like 
oh my gosh, well, it must be so nice that they can stay like calm with their kids or they can stay this with their kids or they're doing all these activities with their kids and I'm not doing as much. And you can get in your head about this like shame around your parenting style. So I thought it was really fascinating to hear even a celebrity being like, hey, I'm trying my best to be involved amidst being able to just hire people to do it all, but I'm trying to be involved. And it's so hard. Hmm. And there's this part where she was talking about how all four kids want her all the time. And I have two kids and I feel that. And she was talking about putting them to bed. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have had to do this before. Where she literally, she'll go in the room and she'll be like, I'm taking 15 minutes with this child. And like setting the boundary. And she'll shut the door and the other three are like banging on the door, crying. And they're like, mommy, like I want you to put me to bed. And they want to do it by themselves. And so she's like 15 minutes with this kid and then 15 minutes with this one. I'm like, that is a full hour of putting four children to bed. But how many parents have been there? Mm. It's very relatable, you know? Celebrities, Mm. they're just like us. Wow. (laughs) You remember those? Hot take. Yeah, (laughs) celebrities, they're just like us. You remember those? Like, I'm going to the grocery store. They're just like us. (laughs) Remember, uh, I have a hot take about that. Remember, uh, because it's kind of annoying. Like over relatability is. is annoying. It is. Remember We're Jennifer. Not the same. Remember uh, Jennifer, girl from Hunger Games. You're gonna. You always okay, talk about no. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. Ugh. Remember when she went through her big like it girl phase, and she was mm-hmm. like, "Where's our pizza?" Um, those who know know. But she had Only an interview where she talked about like being really hungry and wanting pizza, and everyone was like, "She's just like us. Oh, she likes pizza." And I was like, "You guys, over relatability is exhausting. <laughs> it's okay to be like, I can get, pe- I can pay for DoorDash Express delivery, like anytime I want. I'm Jennifer Lawrence. Like, mm-hmm. stop acting like you're like me. You're not like me. You're not and like maybe me. there's something <laughs> nice about being not a celebrity. Like, I want to rest in that." And I don't want you to be in my space. But at the same time, mm, that's fair. I want to know that you lay on the couch and watch bad TV shows too. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess you I'm just, know that. you can't really please me, I guess. Um, there it is. There that's, it is. That's my hot take. In. Yeah, there's my hot take. But yeah, so everything that you said was very charitable. Unlike what I was going to say. So tell us what you Now I say. feel like, uh, I say it. I mean, good for Kim Kardashian. A part of me is kind of like, uh, like uh, girl (laughs) there are people out here literally being like does my should my kid eat like a microwavable kids cuisine that i'll split with them for dinner or like a craft mac and cheese box like made with water so it's like that's fair so sometimes when people get uber 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 sympathetic i'm kind of like the the excess amount of resources that that person has makes me kind of think like okay but then you're right because at the same time i'm not in her house so the amount of emotional attention her children might need might be way more excessive than other children who aren't being followed by people taking pictures of them and don't have pretty like you know outwardly tumultuous parental figures that are yeah. <laughs> like involved in a lot Fair. of things the amount of therapy those kids will need exactly so it's like probably really hard for them so uh, thank you again this is like the beauty of having you here and us being together yeah. and working but together is like your things. generosity and I, I think, think it's just hard you know yeah hard and not I, to be judgmental Sorry. it's hard not to be and I do think like people who financially aren't like at Kim Kardashian's level it's easy to be like well, it must be nice that you have, like, money and don't have to worry about things. But I think, like, the roots of parenting are universally yes. hard. Like, yep. raising children to try to be, hard. like, good people is just hard. And trying to figure out, like, tantrums and all of that is, like, hard no matter how well off you are. Mm. And I think it's easy for me sometimes to be like, oh, well, if I had more money, more whatever, more this, mm. more time, like – it would be easier and my kids wouldn't be throwing tantrums. But I think it's like well, kids are kids and it doesn't actually, no amount of money like buys you out of tantrums. Mm. Like kids are just kind of going to be kids no matter what parents And that's it. Have. Maybe it's important to look more at the kids and how universal that is rather than the yes. parents and their lived experience. Like me and Kim Kardashian don't relate as human women. But, <laughs> but as, as parents, parents like that's that actually root, true. You know? That's true. And that's a good point. Because I think of like especially one – a uh, person that I follow on Instagram, she like travels and speaks. Um, and you follow her too. She's awesome. Yeah. And she travels and speaks <laughs> and is like out and about or whatever. <laughs> and she has like children and she yeah. always like 
posts how her children are like so happy to see her when she comes home and it's great. Yeah. Um, and I remember she posted one time, uh, someone sent her a direct message saying like, do you ever, f- or how could you leave your children with your husband? Yeah. Like, it must be nice to be able to not be a present mother, like something like or that. Like, something trust your husband like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Something kind of, something not kind of, something yeah, very rude kind. like that. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, even in that scenario, like this is a woman who is, has a career, but also is a mother. Yeah. Has a healthy relationship with the children's father, who's mm-hmm. her husband. And they're like all working together to make this work. And she has priorities in her home that I don't know about. And they probably yeah. have rules about like when each parent can go do what and blah, 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 to make sure that they're giving adequate amount of attention to the kids. Yeah. And they have relationships with their kids that also we don't know about. Exactly. So seeing her on social media, it would be easy to be like, oh. Oh, must be nice to get a weekend away or whatever. Yeah, yeah. but it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, actually, maybe she might miss her kids. Absolutely. Or like maybe yeah. they already have rules in place where it's like, no, they're staying with – their father, who is their father, which is yes. another conversation of like fathers don't babysit their own kids. That's weird. They're just their <laughs> they're just parent. their father. And if your father is in. babysitting their own kid, that's a no. Check it. So, that's a no. but you know, so it's just uh, it's an interesting conversation. But yeah, I guess overall, being judgmental, yeah, is not the vibe I in that it. scenario because at the end of the day. Raising children, period, regardless. It's hard. So. And to what you were just saying, there's a part in the podcast where Kim Kardashian talks about how being a parent, part of your role in being a parent is not just being a parent, but like showing them what a healthy adult looks like. Mm. And she was talking specifically in like the interviewer was asking her if she has like mom guilt about like leaving to go do these things for work she was like well obviously every mom has mom guilt that's Mm. like the plague of mothers like we are gonna feel guilty for stepping away from our children but she was like but do i feel guilty about showing my children what a work ethic looks like and do i feel guilty that they're gonna know that like i had goals and i still tried to achieve them while I was a mother like no because I Mm. want them to see especially like her daughters like she wants them to see that you can still have goals Mm -hmm. um and that isn't to say like if you're a stay-at-home mom you stay at home and that's like the whole thing you do like that's beautiful and that's a gift and to show your children that you know um but my daughters ask all the time like mommy what's your job what do you do and so I explain to them like well my first and foremost job is to take care of you and these are the other things mommy does to like keep our house afloat Mm -hmm. and do things and this is why because I'm passionate about them to explain to them that you can have like further passions and so I do think there's value to that like prioritization of yourself whatever that looks like if that looks like having a career outside the home if that looks like having hobbies having things you're passionate about or if that looks like prioritizing your mental health because Mm. so many mothers think like well, I couldn't even step away for an hour therapy session once a week. I couldn't even wake up early in the morning to like exercise, pray, like try to get myself ready for the kids. Like I, I don't have time. I don't have this. And they're just pushing off their mental health until they break. And that can happen to so many mothers because now we're putting this scenario where we're trying to juggle like, well, I need to be like this girl boss, but I also need to be a full time mom. And this is like a generation set up for failure. And how do we even like carry all of that? And know? that's an interesting point because the mental health of parents, God bless you all, because mm-hmm. I know my mental health is in a steady decline when I'm tired. Like when I'm tired, yeah. we talked about this a little earlier. I'll start canceling <laughs> things. I'm like, it's I can't done. She's tapped because out. I'm like, I just can't do it anymore. Whereas usually mm-hmm. I used to be like, oh, sure, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go just and not pushing. be my best self. Yeah. But I know that my mental health is on decline. And I know mm-hmm. that parental currency is exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Like that's what you guys trade. Like that's mm-hmm. you're just constantly tired. So yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of mental health decline so you have to do something like for yourself or figure out a way as a mutual if you have like a a supportive partner hopefully um you have to figure out a way to make sure you both are thriving so it's not just like this scenario where you're both drowning with children because that's just so hard and so something that is interesting to me on that point is like it even with this person that we follow she is doing her thing 
and is an awesome girl boss. Ugh, I even like hate that. Whatever. <laughs> I, know, I don't it, like that phrasing, but you know yeah, what I'm saying. She's like an awesome girl boss. She's like an entrepreneur. She's doing it. Whatever. Yes. Um, and she's a wonderful mother, perceptively. And I've also met her. She's like so kind and loves her kids. Yes. And is doing her thing. And so we want that. Like, we're like, wow, we want you. Reach for your goals. Do your dreams. Yeah. But then the minute that she leaves her kids with their father. People are going to shame her. And it's like, well, then what do you guys want? What do you want from us? <laughs> because then mommies that I know that are stay-at-home moms, people are like, oh, well, why aren't you using your degree? Or why aren't you, like, you know, yeah. showing your kids that they can work? And it's like, what do you guys, like, want? Yeah, because like, you want us to take care of our kids, but you want us to be out in the workplace. And I know. I saw this like meme the other day or tweet somebody had posted that was like we were raised in a generation that told women they need to like go out and work like we need to do it like it's time to like take our place in the workplace and fight for that and rightfully so but we also there were no cultural shifts completely off of women to be like the bearers of the household responsibility and raising children and it's so true and like so there's just a generation of mothers that are like crippled by this pressure and praise god i don't identify as amongst them because my husband is like the gift of gifts and works really hard to like help around not help around the house but take his share of the household Mm -hmm. responsibilities and like parent together with me and like if i'm like i gotta go upstairs oh your husband I'm will done, be like he's like Whoop, bye <laughs> go see you or he'll be yep. like go to chanel's house go to whatever mm-hmm. and it's a gift but like that wasn't ingrained into his brain or mine when mm-hmm. we got married like that was something we grew into um and i just don't think that this generation Society of women is like, is like really like has a balance of like going out and working but then feeling like they run their household so interesting it's ultimately ending up to be the question of like what do y'all want like what do y'all want from women uh you want us out here being ceos love it yes let's do do it it. and then you want us to be home like also being one-on-one on on one-on-one with our kids yeah love it i know so many women that would be wonderful mothers that want to like love on their kids like that yeah so many women that are wonderful mommies that love on their kids like that but then it's like but then you can't say oh you're loving on your children like that and then you're not out in the and so honestly parenting sounds like (laughs) kind of sounds like a nightmare but it sounds just (laughs) like gift ultimate (laughs) <laughs> ultimately it's like it's just hard and i imagine the mental health ramifications of not only raising children but then the pressure in whatever kind of uh celebrity tier you're in in life whether yeah. you're just like a normal plebeian like us just walking the streets at walmart or if you're just like someone living in soho in new york yeah. city like the the pressure of feeling like oh man i'm trying to reach for my goals And right now my goals are, my goals are my children, even when I'm sitting at my law office. Yes. And my goals are also to be a great lawyer. Yeah. But like my primary goal, like you were saying, is to make sure that my children are set. Yeah. So it's probably really hard to balance those things and then to also have input from everybody in the whole world because- Absolutely. Everyone has thought. Controversial. And I wish we could spend forever talking about this, but it's like controversial, but- People don't ride on dads like that. I do not they see don't. It. the main Nobody's compl- saying that. the main complaints that I get from people like your husband will say like, you know, he said he always says people always tell him like, oh, gosh, spending so much time with your kids like oh, you must be so exhausted and always just prompting in this way of like, oh, like, where's their mom? This is the worst. Yeah, like, where's their mom? Like, oh, you must be you must be happy to get them home soon. Like, oh, so it's just like, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing, people? What is the model of a true healthy family? Like, what does that look like to anyone? Yeah. Who knows? knows? So a question that we will figure out after this commercial break. Just kidding. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yeah, but that's just so interesting. I wish we had a whole episode to talk about this. But do you have any closing thoughts on our first story? This was like so poppin'. Yeah, I think honestly, just to share a little bit, like tidbit, like I said earlier, I would share about um, my daughter's potty training journey. And I think this is just like a little insight into what it's like to be a parent. So my daughter is, both of my daughters are very headstrong 
and believe they are correct all the time. Um, but my youngest, she's two, Joy, and she just really feels like she knows what is going on in her life. And so we've been trying to, trying to potty train her pretty consistently for a while. And Noelle was very easy to potty train, so we were spoiled. And Joy at first like was like, I know how to do it. Like I know what I'm doing because she was watching Big Sissy. Then all of a sudden she got in this space where she would decide in the morning if it was a day where she wanted to be potty trained or not. Fair. Which isn't this just like how we are as Fair. adults. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I decide how I'm going to be today. Mm-hmm. And so she would wake up and I would like do her cheerleader. I would be like, come on, girl, we're going to do it. We're going to wear undies. We're going to go to the bathroom on the toilet. It's going to be amazing. And I would put her undies on and she would be like, I'm a big girl. And she'd be so excited and she would do it like all day, no accidents, nothing. Then the next day, I would do the same thing, yeah, like you rah rah for her to try to encourage her. And she would literally be like, No, undies. I go potty in diaper today. I was like, Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> because no, like it's time to wear undies. Like you're a big girl. And now I know you can do it. So you need to do it. And I would put her undies on. She'd immediately pee in them. And as soon as I went to change her and be like, Okay, nope. Remember, we go on the toilet. Let's go try. Let's get you new undies. She'd be like, See? need a diaper like she knew and she's so precious mm-hmm. y'all like it's hard to imagine there will probably not so be a day where like you that. will see like their actual faces as they are <laughs> um but trust me they are such cute kids and okay. joy is like a little petite little like baby so little baby boss like she's so petite yes. and she will she tell you what's up small. yes she will be like no 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 Like, I'll go and hug her, and she's like, no kiss, no kiss, no hug, no, no, no. She'll say, no tight squeeze, uh -uh. no, no, no no. hard kiss. No, (laughs) Nanny's a little aggressive with the squeeze. (laughs) She's like, no. So I totally, she knows she's in charge. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I reached like a breaking point last Mm. Thursday. I called my husband, and I was like, I don't know, man. I just think we got to be done. I can't potty train this kid. We have like three weeks before we leave for our summer camp. So it's like, I can't do this. On this timeline, we started like two months ago. I thought we'd have plenty of time. And I was just at my breaking point. He was really supportive and was like, I think she's stubborn and I we can't do this anymore. He was like, if you can't do it, we're not going to do this. So whatever you think. And I called or I texted my mom and I was like, oh, my gosh, potty training is horrible. Like just rant. And she could tell that it was like mm. not doing well. And so my mom called me and was like, I'm so sorry. Talk me through it. And then like prayed with me that joy would like figure it out or that whatever was going to happen that I would just have like the wisdom to decide if we were going to keep going or not and then right after that my dad came on the phone to talk to Joy and he is like the light of Joy's life she's obsessed with him a great relationship Um, and so she was like people and he was like hey Joy like do you think you can do it you think you can like be ready to go potty on the toilet like what do you think and she was like yeah people and she went in Went to the bathroom, and she has been in underwear, no accident since. Wow. Crazy. It's the power of the peepaw. The power of peepaw. Wow. And just really, I think the power of being like, I can't do this on my own, Mm. which to me is like the biggest struggle in parenting is to admit that like, I can't do this by myself, and like, I need help, and like... I need a day off or just to say out loud, like, this is so hard. And like, I can't can't figure out potty training my kid. And right before that, I was on the phone with my husband. And like, it might seem silly if you like don't have kids. If you have kids, it might be like, that makes total sense. But I was literally like, I am home with her all day and I can't potty train her. Like, what is wrong with me? Like, am I failing that Mm. I can't do this thing and like teach my kids the thing that they should know how to do? And you start to get in your head, like thinking like this, is a greater issue and you're like just not a good parent because of it and so having someone to be like hey let's take a step back it might be seem so silly to like ask god for help with potty training but it's like full reliance and like full sacrifice like Mm. what does that look like and then it was like boom Hmm. works 
I love crazy. that. Crazy. I love that. And your parents are so great because they, they really are the type that will be like, let's just pray. Let's just pray right <laughs> let's now. Let's just pray. Like, right now. We're going to pray yep. that whatever demon is <laughs> making <Possessing> joy <laughs> poop in her <laughs> underwear, that it they it will be expelled both literally and spiritually. Yes. Yes. So, but it oh is so like kids to pull you right there to the brink of insanity where you feel like you're going to lose your mind and mm. then be like, figured it out. Wow. It's all good now, mom. Wow. Like they really make you think you're about to lose it and then they'll be like, I'm good. I love that. Well, crazy. I just want to give some claps to wonderful parents out there. You're doing it. I don't know if this is the right button, Let's so see. it could not play. <laughs> wow. Go parents. Go we are parents. praying for you. Yes, you're doing we it. Are. You're doing the work that I choose not to do every day. <laughs> I love taking care of just myself right now. It's great. So next one. You. So for our next story, <laughs> um, John Walsh, uh, or wow, Dylan Walsh, he is um, in uh, CW's uh, uh, Lois and Superman. Sp- yeah. If you've ever liked Spider Man. Spider Man. I know that was an accident. Like- um, if you've ever watched that show, it's really good. Um, it's like. CW's really been cranking it up with their shows. It's like super good. It's on HBO Max. Oh, which is now Max. Um, Oh. Yeah, we can talk about that later. It's crazy. Um, They they digested uh, Investigation Discovery as well as HDTV. So now they have like Property Brothers and all that stuff. Oh my gosh, thank you. Wow. So now I when you log things. in, it should log in to your regular HBO Max. I love that. Yeah. So... Wow. Dylan Walsh's son uh, rescued someone whose car plunged into a body of water um, and he jumped in and saved the person. And Dylan Walsh was talking about how proud he was of his son, but how that, you know, heroism is something that's not unfamiliar with who his son is. Um, which is such a like beautiful thing for a parent to say. And as I was reading this, I was just thinking like, how can acts of heroism inspire us to strive for virtue? Like usually when I see, I'm the type of person that will like watch things and get very Mm -hmm. emotional about them. Like if I watch parents like cheer on their kids or like someone win a baseball game or like, the Olympic uh, commercials. The Olympic commercials. I'm notorious for like watching those and then just like sitting and watching them all at once just to cry. Or pull it or making people watch them like at parties. I think we actually watched them at your house one night. Yeah. Just we've me done and it you. Multiple just times. me, you, and your husband. Yeah. Um, just everybody crying. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, but it's like, it's amazing how seeing or reading. Um, about acts of heroism really inspires you to want to be better. And I wonder why that is. And then I wonder if there's anything that you've seen or heard of that you can remember that you've been like, man, witnessing that has really made me want to be better and strive for Mm. virtue in that sense. There's so much there. I think honestly, even reading stories about strangers, I think is inspiring to me, but looking to people in my own life that I feel like have a lot of like fortitude and really just like fought through circumstances like Mm -hmm. I think that's very heroic um and that is just inspiring to me to see people just continuing um but big stories like this always stand out because I'm like wow like the thought of the complete lack of selfishness you need to have Mm -hmm. in that moment to commit to like risking for someone else like is so beautiful and Mm -hmm. such a sacrifice to do for someone you have no idea who that person even is Mm -hmm. like that's like next level sacrifice to me Mm -hmm. what did you feel about this story you know what i was thinking of which i was like jasmine will totally get this because we're the same in this way yes i love watching videos and i don't know someone could watch this and be like chanel that sounds like a mental disease which and it could be (laughs) so but i love watching videos of like children like the what would you do you know where it's like a child would be like i'm lost like Oh, Help yeah. me. And then it's like, what would you do? But the child's not actually lost because I would never watch a child actually be lost. I would like, that would make me yeah, pass away. Nice. But like the child's pretending to be lost, but the adults don't know that. And then it's like, what would you do? Like, n- and like 99% of adults are like, oh, let's go in the store, see if your parents are in there. Let's like stand on the sidewalk. Let's yeah. figure out where your parents are. Um, and I just love watching that kind of like everyday person 
taking it upon mm. themselves to be like, oh, oh my gosh, like, what are you even talking about? Of course. Yeah. Or, you know, or like someone will come up to a parent um, or an episode of what would you do? Like someone will come up to a child and say like, all right, let's go. And then the child would say like, you're not my mom. And the person next to them on the bench, who's just uh, like an adult who has no idea they're on TV, will be like, is this your kid? Like, I don't feel comfortable with you. And just yeah. taking on that responsibility of being like, mm -mm. and that communal like village aspect of like, we're all responsible for each other's families and children. And it makes me think of, cause you and I will talk about this sometimes, like where we'll be places. And if a child, like if we're walking together and we'll all be like together as a family with your kids or whatever, and I'll see like another kid somewhere and I don't see parents yeah. I'll immediately be like, uh, mm. <laughs> like, because like, we live in like, Florida. Where are your people? Yeah, yeah. and it's like Disney World, beaches. Oh gosh, it's I mean, it's like themselves. there's a so million stressful. places where children, God forbid, could be like, you know, taken by someone who d won't treat them kindly. So I'm always mm -hmm. like looking around, and you're all, and we always talk about how we like look around and we're like who's like where's or like your parents kind of far away or like where's your parent thinking yeah. internally kind of prepared to be like hey like you okay are you all right like where's your parent you know um and so it in that way kind of seeing people be heroic you know by saying hey you're lost okay let's yeah. see if your mommy's in this place or maybe they just didn't pick you up from school, but I'll wait with you and we can figure it out together. Yeah. It inspires me in that, in that everyday way when, especially when I'm out and about to really, especially for children to be like, okay, what's the mix here? What's the vibe? Yes. Like where to are you? be an extra eye. Yeah. Like yeah. where are your parents? And in that way, like I, it makes me want to be like a virtuous person too, to be someone that a child would be like, oh yeah, I'll go to that person you know yes. um, I will ask that person for help or I'll feel comfortable to be like absolutely. I don't know where my parents are or like whatever yeah and so absolutely. that in that way I really I was really thinking like wow those normal everyday acts of people taking responsibility for other people as we should right yeah um it's it's so in, uh inspiring because it yeah, really makes me think like wow we it, it belongs to all of us. And even my mom told me a story about when I was younger and I got lost in Walmart because I was like <laughs> reading a book and I'm walking and reading. And mm -hmm. I went up to the cash register and told them I couldn't find my parents. And then my mom like heard over the speaker and like went to the register and was like, oh, my gosh, like crying and emotional and she was just mm -hmm. like chanel like oh my, if someone no. at the register wouldn't have like helped you know taking you seriously and then let you i was i must have been like seven you know oh. and and said like whatever she's like i just was like oh my gosh like, you know beside herself beside Absolutely. and so it's like that kind of mutual responsibility is so important yeah mm -hmm. i love that that's a beautiful example yeah so it's like it's just so so interesting so I definitely think that, you know, heroism can be very inspiring, but it I don't think it has to be huge things like people jumping in bodies of water to save other people. Yeah. It can really just be like, hey, someone is not speaking to someone in a way that's upstanding. Maybe yeah. someone's not speaking to their child in a certain way, getting into the parent stuff. That's a little like that's a conversation that's, for it. <laughs> that's tricky. Yeah, telling we someone. struggle with that. Yeah, telling someone that because there's been so many times where I want to be like, hey, girl, it's not that serious. Like So many times at Disney where we're like, you shouldn't really, but okay. <laughs> I was like, you shouldn't really, but, but I'm okay. not going to say anything. Um, but I love that. Yeah. That's like mm -hmm. the most beautiful example, I think, of heroism or the most beautiful kind of definition is like that being a hero is just keeping your eyes open to the things happening around you and where you can assist and help and just being vigilant and ready for that. Like whether that's advocating for somebody in a small way, looking out for a kid that might be by themselves, but just knowing like I have a good heart and I'm going to help because some people don't. And a lot mm. of times it's hard to not just see like the world getting so negative. But if you are someone that you know, it's like a person who makes good decisions it makes good choices and you want to like inspire that in the world then like keep your eyes open to the places every day where you can show 
like heroic actions which you never know like where that know. could be or you mm-hmm. know and hopefully it will never be a situation where it's like someone's in in like physical danger but yeah even just like being present to someone and being someone that's that's virtuous enough for someone to be like you know i feel like i can talk with yes, you or absolutely. whatever like that's a cool thing so yeah, it's a gift so yeah so what a beautiful thing um so are you ready for our last story i'm so ready okay so shia LaBeouf had a massive conversion massive continual last yeah. year um and it was a topic of many conversations with people uh in regards to like things that he's done in this past how he's tr- trying to be in his future um you know just a little bit of controversy there yeah and so we're not gonna get into all we're that. not gonna get into that because we're antidepressing but we are gonna say <laughs> that one's been talked about a lot too so yeah, yeah. but we are gonna say that everyone deserves steady prayer so yeah we're gonna pray for him redemption arc yes redemption arc maybe this is his redemption arc so for it everyone deserves prayer and yep Padre Pio, the movie that he has been working on, which kind of sparked this massive conversation about his conversion and how God's working in his heart, is coming out on June 2nd, which is very soon. And Mm -hmm. I definitely want to see it. So we should like figure that out with your husband. So we can like, maybe we can, I don't know, too intense for Noel. Um, (laughs) (laughs) She would not make it. But Padre Pio, the movie he's been working on, is coming out June 2nd. And while he was recording the movie, filming the movie Mm -hmm. um he talked all about how as a part of his research he would stay with um brother priests and um he would go to mass and he would pray and then eventually he started you know going to mass and feeling like this connection with God and praying and feeling this connection with God and spending time with other priests and brothers and seeing the way that they lived and f- being inspired by that way yeah. of living and and really forging his relationship with the Lord in a way that maybe wasn't as strong before. Yeah. And so it makes me think of, you know, when he talks about this movie and we've had we have this movie we had Father Stu mm-hmm. two years ago, which I didn't see that, but I heard it was good. Mm-hmm. Every year we have like a new nativity movie um, every year. and so, Right? We just keep doing it. It's never going to run its course. Um, I think we have one actually this December with that guy from that TV show that's for children that you like. Yes. Um, and so it's like I think about how Hollywood is constantly – churning out seemingly horrible things like Hollywood is like just a disaster we never want to talk about you know that's not like a place that people strive to go but can it also be a place of evangelization like because Mm -hmm. Shia LaBeouf is having this like big conversion right and there are there are big things happening in Hollywood right we have the chosen we have the chosen in theaters we have Jesus revolution. There's like so many things happening where people are trying to reinvent what is existing there Mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. Hollywood a place that's not sad. And so I guess it, I guess it just comes to mind of like, is there hope for evangelization in Hollywood or are we just, is this something that just kind of happens where we come out with things and then we just go back to the way? Like, is it just that way? Or can it truly be a place that can be, like, reformed? Yeah. You know, what do you think? Yeah, that's such a hard thing to think about because it's hard to say what the demographic is. Like, is somebody who is not already Christian, already invested, going to be like, oh, Padre Pio? Let's do mm. it. I'm going to go see it. You know, like, who is going to go see this movie? Are people going to be like, Shia LaBeouf is in it. I'm going to go see it. Mm. And then be like, oh, wow. Like, I think his conversion makes a lot of sense. Because I think when you spend a certain amount of clocked hours with, like, truth, beauty, and goodness, you're going to realize that it is, in fact, truth, beauty, and goodness. Like, mm. it, the proximity to it. And his proximity to it was so close. And his community was, like, these brother priests, like, when that is what you're surrounded with, it's easy to buy in. If you are just an average person who isn't invested in any faith, you go see this movie and you go home and back to your life. I don't think it's going to be as like quick and immediate as a 
conversion as maybe Shia LaBeouf experienced with like the immersion of filming the movie. But I do think like grace is all around us and like Mm -hmm. God can work in ways that are mysterious to us. And maybe there are like nuggets in that movie that might hit somebody and like that there can be evangelization through that. And that can be a tool. I think there's like some validity to that, to that experience. But what are your thoughts? I know there's been a lot of not good Christian (laughs) movies throughout our time. (laughs) Um, But there seemingly is, like The Chosen's great show, you know, they're seemingly getting a little better Mm -hmm. at making these movies and Mm -hmm. making these shows. Do do you feel hopeful about the future of Christian Catholic media that's coming out? I do. Honestly, I think that we're getting better. Like, we're making things more cinematic. I think we're making yeah. the quality of things better. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes from an investment of us, right? So, like, The Chosen is a free show that people can watch. Yes. And it's not behind, like, a paywall. Mm-hmm. And amazing. It's like, I I could be misspeaking here, so please comment if I'm wrong. But I believe it's just, like, sponsored by people. Like, I, I think they just so, get yeah. funding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, amazing. It's just, like, a funded show, not behind a paywall. Anyone can watch it. Now they're in mo- they were in movie theaters. I mean, yeah. and it's – the quality of the show is, like, well done. Yeah. And that's not usually the case when you're talking about not good movies yeah. that aren't uh, very unorthodox, to be kind. Um, yep. And so it's just – I am hopeful, hopefully from the investment of others, that we can get to a place where people will be like, like you were saying, if we start seeing truth, beauty, and goodness, it doesn't have to be like a story about Jesus and Mary, but it can be just like a story about virtue, a story about just like good things. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is evangelization and that will bring a lot of people to this place of like wow we don't live in like a corporate dystopian hellhole like yeah. there is like there is hope, hope. <laughs> because what it's like shock. i remember um years ago when hunger games came out and then like divergent came out and then like all these other sad kind of dystopian movies came <laughs> out and i was like what is going on like we're yeah. we're obsessed with like this world of Everyone is broken into factions. Nobody has food. It's like sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, for as much as we really pat ourselves on the back as like a, as a country and as a a world, we are super, super excited about nobody having any food or money. So it's just interesting to struggle. Mm -hmm. Like we love that struggle love. So Mm -hmm. it's just like, it's beautiful to see content that people are like, no, this is a struggle, but uh, like- a metanoia, like a change, like there is a conversion. We're not just going to be in this same sad place. And then at the end, just like the girl ends up with the hottie and then the movie's over. But it's like, no, sometimes actually like arcs that are different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, so I do believe that we can eventually, eventually get there. We'll see. I'm excited about that new nativity movie. Mm -hmm. I heard that's going to be really good. What Um, else are you excited about? I am also excited about the little mermaid that is coming out. This Friday, um, so which is crazy, and um, it has uh, Haley Bailey in it. No, Hallie Bailey. Well, and Maybe. I'm very excited about seeing her. She has a beautiful voice, um, so and I'm so excited about seeing just like Little Mermaid reworked with so yeah. many cool characters. It's gonna be awesome. Um, no new characters. It's still the same story, but just like different re- actors. Yeah, different Actresses. actors, and um, and it's like the first remake, which normally remakes of movies i'm not like a huge I'm normally not a yeah fan. like live action remakes can be pretty busted in a lot of so ways we'll see. yeah so we'll see but like i've heard nothing but good things so far and i'm also supporting everybody black so i'm probably never going to say anything negative about it at least publicly Even so if she doesn't like it yeah i'll tell jasmine i'll probably yeah. never tell anyone else. i won't say so that. i won't tell anybody yeah like. so like you know i'm excited <laughs> for it like that yeah so i'm excited for it and i think the last live action remake Disney wise that I've liked was the live action Cinderella with oh. the uh they've done a lot. Wow. Uh, well the brandy one, amazing. I amazing. mean an Asian prince, We're a black a mom, a We're white dad, <laughs> a black Cinderella, Didn't even two make white steps. I mean, wow. <laughs> if you're talking about like universality. So um I love that one. I love the one 
uh, with the Lily. Nope. That's not her last name. Lily something. And uh, the very, very beautiful man, James. Also can't remember his name. This is the worst segment. Um, I'm here for this. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) I love that one because it was just like a really beautiful story of forgiveness as she, I don't know if you've ever seen the latest Cinderella remake. I don't think I have. Excluding the Cinderella remakes from Selena Gomez prize chef's cat as well as and the hillary other duff. cinderella remake from hillary duff as well as the <laughs> that is other top, cinderella top, remake. Top. <laughs> the other cinderella remake from that other girl and like oh my gosh there's so, been so many there's good been ones. so many but what i'm talking about is the actual ones in movie theaters not straight to dvd oops so um but like there was a beautiful scene where she walks down the stairway and she turns to her fairy her stepmother, whoops, and she says, I forgive you. And it was so beautiful because that was like in theaters. Yeah. She didn't even need to say that. But I just remember thinking like, wow, this is a really good movie just to learn about. Process forgiveness. Like processing forgiveness. I was like, this is I good. So usually remakes are not good. In this scenario, I probably won't tell you all if I don't like it. I'm probably going to hype it up anyway. I'm very excited for it. That's probably the movie I'm most be. excited about of most That's recent. Great. So. How about you? What I are you looking it. forward to? I mean, I don't... Besides those movies, what's even happening? I know. I, Let me look up... I'm very I'm in the show like world that. right now. I'm okay. very in show world. Um, and I have been watching trashy television. I love that. So just watch Selling Sunset. My sister and I watch it so we can look at Beautiful Homes. Chanel watches it too. Mm-hmm. And we just watched that whole season. Could go into a whole thing about it. But essentially, my rates are... Not interesting. Not into it. <laughs> um, but the homes, 12 out of 10. Love watching how billionaires live. Very into it. Feels like HGTV with some drama. Um, and that's fine. It's great. Uh, and then what is coming out for us? Never Have I Ever? Oh, Never Have I Ever last season. Yes. Will she pick the... Paxton? Paxton or... Who's ben. The other ben or who's the other guy? Oh, I don't know. The the new Indian character. Yeah, he only came last season. I'm not attached. He was beautiful, so I don't it's know. It's a Paxton for me. So we will see who she picks, but yeah. honestly, I'm I'm most excited for that. All I can process at this point is shows. Things <laughs> I can watch from my home, I can do. There it is. The new um, Haunted Mansion. They're redoing Haunted Mansion. Oh, my Mansion. husband will be so excited. So that I knew, yeah. They redid Peter Pan uh and wendy so that's happening. on disney plus i heard it was really bad okay all right that's what um, i heard okay let me know if you watch it <laughs> let me know if i'm wrong heard it was um bad. they are also making teen wolf the movie oh my gosh uh which is they're making a shrek five. <gasps> that is thrilling for you we should end on that they're making a shrek five some people are heroic parents are trying their best evangelization is happening probably Specifically through Shrek 5, because there is a God that is good and true and beautiful if they're making another Shrek movie. And that's it, y'all. Smash that like button. Follow us on Spotify. Rate us on Spotify. Follow us on Instagram. If you listen to this episode and you were like, oh my gosh, this part really stuck out to me, let us know what it is. Take us in your Instagram stories. Do the whole thing. Yeah, there it is. Can't Smash wait. that like button. We'll talk to y'all soon. In the meantime... Stay real. Stay real, yeah.